Hi, I'm Mark Matsumoto, and today I'm going to show you how to turn what could, well, be best described as a giant orange poo into shiny pearls of deliciousness. First off, you're going to need a couple pieces of equipment. I'd recommend having some bowls, a strainer, some gloves, and this is the most important piece. Um, basically, you need, I don't know if you can see this here, but it's, it's like a wire mesh with holes in it. Um, this is actually meant for grilling, but you can use a cooling rack or basically anything that's got holes that are gonna be big enough to pass the individual pearls of caviar through. We got a recurra here. It's actually known as sujiko at this stage um, in Japanese. And um, basically, as you can see here, there's one side that's kind of smooth, um, and the other side is kind of opened up. And so what we want to do is actually help it out a little bit by spreading it open a little bit more uh, and flattening it out. And we do that just by kind of pulling it apart like this. Okay, now that's opened up. You see I've got my screen here over my bowl. I'm just gonna flip it over and just sort of rub it on the screen. And you're gonna see the ikura dropping right through into the bowl. And um, these, the caviar, it's pretty, um, I mean, it seems pretty fragile, but it's, uh, it's pretty solid, so you can, you can apply a moderate amount of pressure and not have to worry about bursting the little sacks. Now, you may have seen videos where people um, soak this in hot water to get the skein to come loose. The skein's the, the little skin um, that the little row sacks are in. Um, the problem with doing it in hot water is that you burst a lot of the pieces of caviar and so you lose a bunch. And then while it may seem a lot faster than doing this, um, it actually ends up taking more time because uh, what happens is the skein breaks up into smaller pieces and you end up having to pick them out one by one. And so I actually prefer this method to using the hot water. Okay, so that's actually looking pretty good. Um, I've got most of the row out. There's a little bit more, and we can keep going, but there's actually an easier way to get the last bit of salmon roe out of the skin. So here's a trick. Basically, um, I've got some chopsticks here. These are like the disposable kind that you get with sushi at the grocery store. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we wanna find the end of the skein here. So we're gonna hold it up, and we're gonna sand sandwich it between the chopsticks. And then we basically wanna just roll the chopsticks uh, like you would uh, picking up some spaghetti. And as you roll it, you're gonna see the ikura just squeezing out of the sides into my hand. And you can see it just flowing down into the bowl. And then on the chopsticks, we're just left with, uh, with the skein. All right, look at that, look at that. Came out beautifully. Uh, and we've got the remains of the skein here. So we're just gonna toss this and give the caviar a rinse. We've got our caviar separated, and we're basically just gonna dump this into a strainer, and we're gonna give it a quick rinse with some cold water to get any of that extra um, blood and, you know, generally stuff that you don't wanna be eating off. And look at that. It's already looking more like the caviar we know, right? Beautiful. The next thing we're gonna do is make our brine for curing the roe. Most people tend to use just salt, but I love using a dashi-based brine. Uh, dashi is Japanese soup stock, and you can check the link below to uh, get my recipe for making dashi from scratch. Uh, by using a dashi-based brine, we're gonna get a ton more flavor in our finished ikura. Okay, so first we're gonna add two tablespoons of soy sauce, a tablespoon of sake, one tablespoon of salt, and one tablespoon of sugar. And we're just gonna give this a little mix. And this is gonna be very salty, uh, but keep in mind, we've gotta cure our roe to make ikura, and the salt is what's gonna help do that. Okay, wow, look at that. We have our ikura in the bowl, and we have our dashi stock that's been seasoned here. So we're just gonna pour this right over the ikura and give it a little bit of a stir. 
And then we basically want to just stick this in the fridge um, to cure for about one day. Okay, it's been a day and I've got my finished ikura here in the jar and I can't wait to try it. It looks incredible. Uh, the little pearls of caviar have absorbed all of that good flavor from the dashi we made yesterday and I'm gonna give it a try. Mmm. Oh wow. That's incredible. They're like little spheres of pure umami bliss exploding in your mouth. Okay, I am gonna go get a huge bowl of rice and cover it with this ikura.